In the previous tutorial, we took a look at creating themes with WordPress templates. Now, a theme, basically, what we're doing here is a collection of files with each file doing its own job. For example, I've got the footer file with only the footer code in it. I've got the header file with only the header um, code in it. And then I have other ones for like my loop and sidebar and whatever else. But then I have an index file and this tells it to get the parts that I need, like get the header file, get the sidebar, get the footer, and then I can even tell it to get an individual custom template part if I want. Um, and of course, I can create custom pages as well, and this is a custom template right here that calls some of the files that it needs, but also has custom information in that one page. So this kind of paves the way towards themes, but it's not exactly the same thing as a theme. If we look at a real theme in WordPress, we're looking at a fairly large collection of files, typically. And yes, each file can do its own job. So if I do like content aside, you'll see that this has not everything for the entire website. But what this does is have just the information that this aside needs when we're on a content um, aside page. Now, we also have other ones in here, 404, archive, author, category, comments. Um, let's see, what else do we have in here? Page, and then we have sidebar front, then we have single, and we have tag. Now, the thing about these pages is that these pages are basically like template overrides um, based upon whether or not these PHP files exist, it will use it to display the content or not. So to understand this, we really need to look at a graphic. And uh, WP Toots put out a great graphic um, about the, it's the WordPress cheat sheet on um, the template hierarchy. And so here's where you can clearly see basically what's kind of happening. The index.php file is the only really required template file in there. That's why in so many of our early um, tutorials, I was using just the index file. It wasn't until we got all the way past custom templates into custom themes that we started to use separate files. But what happens is now we have to look at whether or not we name our files a particular thing so they will automatically be applied instead of us having to do something like pick a template create an individual template file. Because if you really looked at creating an individual template file for every page that you want to have one for, it'd be kind of ridiculous. So, um, for example, let's take a look at this one. If we're on the front page and there's a file that's called front-page, then we can use this particular file instead of the index file. So let's take a look at my new template hierarchy page, and I do indeed have a front page.php. If I look at this file, I've got some content that's for the front page, and then I've also got these module positions, which are just some simple um, module positions that I created. I should actually have that module 1, 2, and 3. And let's take a look at how this works in my file. Now, if I look at my pages, I've created a new page called Home. That way I can assign that as the front page. And I've also created my custom fields from module 1, 2, and 3. And all that I'm getting here is just some output. I could probably wrap this with some HTML, and that might be a little bit smarter. So I'm going to update those so I actually get a line each. And of course, these could be whatever I like. I'll update that. And then let's take a look at a couple things that we have to do as well. One thing that we need to do is we need to customize what page is going to be used as our home page, so our front page. So I click on Customize, and I actually have already done this, but instead of the latest post, which is what it was set to by default, I've chosen a static page as my home page, and that's going to be the home. So I save and publish. Let me close this. And then I'm going to go to my themes, and need to choose this particular template hierarchy. So I'll activate that hierarchy. In fact, if I had done that before I'd even gone there, then you would actually see on the output that I'm getting in this preview window, I'm actually getting my module positions right there. So we know that indeed it is using my template. 
um, if I go and view the site, then you'll see I also get the same thing. So on the home page, I get my module positions, and that's the only one that exists. Then on the services page, I still have the custom page, and on the products, I'm using index.php. Sometimes what I do, um, if I'm getting confused by things, is that I might open up something in here and actually just add a little h1 index.php file something in here so I can make sure that I know which file is being output and I'll use that for for testing and you can even put a class on it so it will delete it um, so you'll see there I'm getting index.php I go back to services I have the custom page and then of course if I'm on the main site then I have the um, front page.php. Now there are the other things as well. If we have a 404 error, then it'd use the 404 PHP file. If we have a um, page, if it's called page.php, um, then it will use that. Um, but what I really like is this page slug, it'll use a certain thing. So if I look back at mine, I've got something called page-content contact and at this point I don't even have a contact page but let's see what happens if I go to pages all pages and I create a new one and I call it contact page I can publish that I'm gonna go back to view the site um, Dun, dun, dun. Oh, guess what? This is something I just thought about. One of the things that's a problem with using the WP menu, um, so if I take a look at this, it's in the header. I'm using the WP nav menu, and the problem with this is that it means that you do have to set up your menus in WordPress. So I need to go back to my menus, and I need to add a couple menus to this. So I'll have the on the top nav I need to add my contact there you go alright so now I've added that contact page I can save the menu go back to my site you'll now see I have contact and when I click on that you'll see I'm getting contact us using this form and it says this is the contact page and let's find out if that is actually indeed what I'm getting and you'll see I've got an H1 on that page that says contact us using this form so I'm indeed using that page by default because it fits into the template hierarchy so understanding this hierarchy of when it's using certain pages is a really important thing you'll notice another one in here that I have is called let's see category news that can be really important so now we're kinda of getting more into the blogging section if I go into posts and I edit this post here I'm actually going to change this to the news category so now I've got um, let's see news and uncategorized and if I want to go ahead and view that then let's see what I can do here dun, dun. let's test this website not sure that I'm ever actually going to even see that. Ah, category. I haven't set up any of my uh, slugs, so I can't really do that. The permalinks, which I probably should have done a long time ago. Permalinks is something that I always do. And uh, pretty much set it to post name. Just like that. There we go. Now we're getting it. And it says recent news. Hello world. So let's just see if that is correct. I go into my category news and you'll see that I have indeed recent news right there. So um, when you're using blogs um, or you're using WordPress and that type of and you have a lot of posts, so a lot of repetitive type posts, um, using categories and other things like that can be really important. So that's really um, what you start to see when you see um, large 
collections of files with lots of different um, names that fit the template hierarchy. These are go going to be used automatically based upon the type page um, that you're on currently or the type of content that you're on currently in WordPress. And it really makes WordPress a very unique content management system and a very powerful one at that. So let us go back to WordPress and in the next tutorial we're going to take a look at creating a child theme, a very simple child theme.